Hi, welcome to the first webinar of the Creative Digital Transformation webinar series dedicated to the topic of creative process planning. My name is Sonia Brani. I am project manager at ITCAM, the Italian Chamber of Commerce for Germany, and project coordinator of the Erasmus Plus project, Creative Digital Transformation. With our project, we want to help all professionals from the tourism, cultural and creative sector to boost their digital skills and digitalize their business. Last year, we launched our online course, Digitalization of Materials and Events, for all professionals wishing to know more about processes and technologies to digitalize their business. In case you missed it, you can check out the learning materials on our website. Even if you are familiar with the available technologies, it is sometimes difficult to come up with a good idea to apply what you have learned to your company. So where to start? How to find a really good idea? We have created this webinar series precisely to help you with that. In this first webinar, we interviewed three companies that developed innovative digital solutions, and we asked them where their idea came from. Plazy from the tourism sector, the cabinet from the cultural sector, and Theatron Live from the educational sector. Plazy is a German startup that developed a digital planning tool for travelers. Let's hear what the founders told us. So thank you very much, Katrin and Inka, for being here with us today um, and to present Plazy, your company. Your slogan is the art of lazy planning. So where did you get the idea to found this company? Uh, yes, hello, um, Sonia. Nice to be here. Well, uh, we founded Plazy, um, our startup this year, because we realized that we ourselves would like to have a tool like Plazy, but it didn't exist yet. So um, we both previously worked at a large German print magazine, a print travel magazine. And during our editorial work, we had to deal with very different players of the tourism sector, with municipalities, with agencies, restaurants. So we got to know that the, the, the offer, one single destination um, has, is, is too huge, it's too big. And that is what makes the planning of an individual trip stressful. What nobody wants, because traveling is, is a beautiful thing. Everybody loves traveling. And also the preparation of a trip should be fun. So we know that people who plan their trips individually, they are looking for good tips, for tips that fit to their interests, to their needs. And they are looking for an individual scheme, or not for a general top 10 list. So our idea was how great would it be for users and for tourism players um, if there was an app that helps me to find my individual travel guide, my, my customized travel guidance, a service similar to a dating platform between travelers and a destination. So that was the idea. And uh, yeah, now we are developing Plazy as a tool for customized travel guidance. Okay, so basically you help tourism companies in providing a digital offer to their uh, to the tourists that go to a destination. So what would you recommend to a tourism company that wants to digitalize but doesn't know where to start? Well, we think that, um, first of all, what, what Katrin was saying before is that um, it things should be or information should be easier for users and should be more fun it's it's not not entertaining enough often so we think that storytelling is quite important like to have a good storytelling that's not just advertisement and just giving the information but that's really about catching people's interest and really getting them involved in in a destination because traveling is a very emotional thing it's not you know it's not something where you you, you put all the information and then you decide on something, but it's where you really want to go to. So I think this is where destinations and, and tourism companies should, should focus on more to, to make people really want to go there and kind of maybe even transport this through, through people, to, um, having, I don't know, people living in the region become 
kind of like, yeah, how to say, um, testimonials to to really present the region. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to have have multimedia storytelling, not not just one, not just text, not just photos, but also podcasts become much more important, videos. And in, in a more general way, I think it's very important that we all learn to think in a more networked way, that we kind of get away from the idea that everybody is doing everything on his own. Mm -hmm. But um, it's better to to widen the perspective and to, to look what services do I need and who offers them and how can I integrate them and this perhaps open up additional communication channels for my, for my item, for my ideas. Um, so we notice that this flexibility and this openness is are absolutely essential, not only to stay up to date, but also to create synergies and to benefit from each other among partners. So digitalization and digital tools can be an asset for a tourism company or for a destination to, to stand out comparison to, to maybe to other players of the, of the sector, we can say. Mm -hmm, and yeah. maybe can you mention one concrete project that you are now implementing with a destination? Yeah, we have a very nice project actually, thanks to the uh, EU Yiko Tandem project. Um, we were in like in the middle of, of developing everything and getting it together, and we paired up with the city of Wiesbaden to to develop what what we were talking about before, like a customized progressive web app for the city of Wiesbaden who wants to address their visitors to like ask them what they want to do when they're in the city and to really give them the location that fit to, to the people's need. So we just started to, to develop this prototype with Wiesbaden and um, it's it's working really well. It's, it's very good to, to be working with the destination on this prototype and to see what they want to show people, like where people should go to when they come to the region, what they think is important. Um, but I think for them, it's also very important or very helpful our, like our perspective about storytelling, because we also implement little videos, little podcasts in this progressive web app. And together it's, it's um, yeah, it's a very nice project to, to, to give the users. It's fun okay. for both sides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then thank you very much. Then we can say to our viewers, if there are any tourism destinations out there and you want to make a digitalized offer for your for your visitors, you can reach out to Plazy. They might Always be able to help you <laughs> <laughs> very well. So thank you very much for being here today. And yeah, good luck with your ongoing projects. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet is a Portuguese company helping cultural and natural heritage venues create and deliver interactive content for each visitor profile. We talked to the founder, Carlos, who explained to us how it works. Hello, I am Carlos Mondragon, co-founder of UGABINET, a company based in Portugal that helps heritage organizations to implement digital transformation on their visitor experience. Cultural and natural tourist venues hold many stories to tell, knowledge to share, and objects to explore. But their visitors have different needs. There are people with different visit times. They speak diverse languages or may have reduced mobility. Therefore, there is no single tool and content for all visitor profiles. Challenges of, for digital transformation in heritage organizations include the creation of content, the delivery of content, providing maps and directions to all different visitor profiles. So the mobile phone is a very useful tool for all kinds of visitors to venues. Let's make use of it. Digital transformation has different dimensions when it's applied to cultural and tourism organizations. Visitor experience is a great opportunity to make use of digital tools in order to enhance the service provided to, to visitors. It is about assisting the visitors, but not substituting the real experience. At UGABINET, we are convinced that it is of great importance to manage and deliver content using the technologies vastly available to the public. 
Our job is to facilitate what visitors are looking for and how they want it. We achieve this by creating and distributing interactive content to each visitor profile using a web app and a wayfinding tool. We use artificial intelligence for content creation, scene object recognition, and augmented reality for wayfinding. For instance, for Parques de Sintra in Portugal, we developed PenaQuest. PenaQuest is a tool comprising six information points in a gamified way using a web app. It includes content distribution devices that allow visitors to access the experience without the need for an internet connection, and the content is in Portuguese, English, and Spanish. This is how it works. We have developed a fully customizable progressive web app that allows the visitor to reproduce basic, accessible, and enriched content. Technology allows to attend different visitor profiles and be more ex exclusive. Visitors may be with some sort of reduced mobility, hearing, or visual impairments. They may be with families with children, elders, youngsters, and many other. In this example, in the Museum of Aeronautics in Spain, we developed a guide with eight languages, subtitles, sign language videos, and audio descriptions to attend many visitor profiles. If you are at the gardens of Palace de Queluz in Portugal, and you want to go from one spot to another within the park, and you want to use Google Maps, this is what it shows you. It takes you out of the site to get there. But if we are using our solution, we show the internal route and you can trigger content within the map. So our wayfinding tool is fully customizable and use augmented reality directions. We also have a web platform that manages and delivers content to the visitor's own mobile. And we use artificial intelligence to translate and produce audios in 39 languages. If there is no internet, we have a solution. Box to Life is our low energy device for content distribution that provides a Wi-Fi network without internet connection. One of our advantages are we use augmented reality, we have an IoT device, and we use artificial intelligence. Digital transformation is feasible, and we use different business models. There are annual licenses that take care of everything, or one-time projects if you want to have control. For example, PenaQuest costs Parques de Sintra 4,500 euros a year. This is less than five cents per visitor. We have clients in Spain, Mexico, Portugal, and Italy. We currently have more than 350,000 users monthly. If we go again to PenaQuest, PenaQuest is used by one third of the total visitors to that park. We have worked for more than 10 years for heritage organizations. In 2019, we received an award from the Alliance of Museums in New Orleans for a project in Mexico. At UGABINET, we want to enrich the experience for all visitors in heritage websites. Thank you. The last company we interviewed is Teatron Live from Italy. They use digital technologies to create a totally new theater experience for children. Let's watch how they do it in the short video clip. After, you will hear the words of Stefano, digital expert of Teatron Live. Ciao. Sono il direttore di Fondazione AIDA. La nostra attività principale è quella indirizzata ai bambini. Con la pandemia è stato impossibile continuare il nostro lavoro. Ci mancava una cosa fondamentale. Per fare teatro occorre il pubblico. 
Ed è per quello che ci siamo interrogati con il nostro staff artistico, chiedendo insieme che cosa potevamo fare per riconnetterci a loro anche se i teatri erano chiusi. La piattaforma On Life cerca di eh, capire e di proporre al bambino un nuovo modo di partecipare a teatro. Partecipare perché è un gioco. Partecipare significa eh, agire sulla superficie e questo significa agire sull'attore. L'attore a sua volta può agire sul bambino poiché ha questo mezzo di comunicazione. Il rapporto interattivo con l'attore è molto importante perché viene fruito attraverso lo stesso strumento che loro usano per dei rapporti passivi. E è proprio in questo che Teatro On Life scardina un elemento molto pericoloso della loro formazione che è quello di subire il contenuto che viene erogato da questo dispositivo. Quindi nonostante le porte chiuse dei teatri siamo riusciti a tenere aperte quelle che sono le porte dell'immaginazione, della condivisione e della comunicazione e questo grazie a tecnologie che devono essere continuamente però seguite e migliorate e attraverso questo progetto potremmo veramente andare a realizzare non solo degli spettacoli che entrino completamente nel vivo del loro essere ma che aiutino anche a creare nuovi lavori, semplicemente attori che siano anche tecnologici e diventino interattivi con i bambini anche mentre i bimbi sono a casa. Non sarà un servizio software di quelli a pagamento, ciò che verrà pagata sarà il talento che grazie a questa piattaforma potrà essere finalmente distribuito. Supportate il nostro progetto Teatro Life perché crediamo fermamente che questa possa essere un'alternativa Alternativa. Non è teatro, è qualcos'altro. È questo il momento per scoprirlo insieme. Le persone hanno sempre sentito il bisogno di creare un luogo, un'idea e il teatro, essendo una creazione dell'uomo, beh, non fa eccezione. E sarà così bello rincontrarsi di nuovo in un modo ancora più creativo e fantastico. Okay, thank you Stefano for being here with us today and for presenting Teatron Life. Um, in the video you were saying that Teatron Life was born during the pandemic to keep the contact to your young public. So I wanted to ask you something. Now that life came more or less back to normal, why are digital technologies still an asset for organizations of the cultural and educational sector? Uh, well, so thank you everybody for watching. Uh, yeah, the post-pandemic basically increased our audience, our potential audience. So these, te these technologies are key because there is much to do and um, much more audience, I mean, to, to bring on. And so many more people, especially children, I mean, they are, I mean, not using more, but probably more comfortable with, or at, at least more wisely. So let's say that now that the public got used to technologies, they will keep on using that also yeah. if they can go to the theater. Of course, it, it will not substitute the theater, but it is just another experience. And especially for children, this might yeah. be also a healthy use of technologies. So something that um, we could recommend in any case. Yeah, yeah, it's healthy. They, they learn, they, they probably, they, they started to understand that uh, physical uh, reality, physical participation is a, is, a, is a very, very compelling experience, but digital may be not only to watch boring uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that, but it can be something really interesting. So, I mean, that's much more to do, but there is a, at least uh, some curiosity going on, some, some more. So that's why uh, good technologies, good uh, planned and developed uh, digital technologies may, may help. Thank you for your opinion. A last question. Um, it would be interesting to know which are the challenges that you are facing now as a company dealing with digital technologies and also what would you recommend to companies of the cultural sector that are now approaching digital technologies? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, the challenges are more or less the same that um, many other digital companies may face. And of course, financing is one of the most uh, important. Uh, I mean, the problem here is that uh, uh, digital innovation 
and maybe financing because of that. But in terms of uh, um, cultural advance, it's very, very, it's kind of harder to get financing because if you put it on a digital innovation perspective, okay, that's good, but there are many, many more. And so as, a, as an IT infrastructure or um, platform solution, you have to demonstrate that you're better than the major probably. And that's not always the case, especially for, uh, for us, for a small, uh, not, well, not small project, but uh, yeah, um, uh, focused project. We are focused on children, so, and culture for children. So my advice for, uh, <laughs> my advice, my opinion, if you want to start to, to do digital culture is, at, at least in my opinion, is to focus very, very well to the niche that you're hitting because probably it will be a niche. So don't, uh, don't waste your time. I mean, it's, it's better to uh, achieve the best result in that niche than to stay, I mean, uh, uh, generically. To sum up, we can say that companies should try to be unique, to focus on their niche, but also policymakers, they should uh, get involved in order to give more funds also to cultural organizations because culture is important and it is important that, that it grows. We hope you found these three stories inspirational. See you in the next Creative Digital Transformation webinar.